five, All right. four, three. Tired of wiping on the same boss for hours? Die, insect. Can't seem to win against that new druid deck? My thanks to you. Are your teammates not standing on the payload? Quit lollygagging. Get on the payload. Well, grab a drink and pull up a chair. This is the Game Case Show, your Blizzard Entertainment podcast. Here are your hosts, Cuddles and Turarts. Well, hello! Hi, howdy, and welcome to episode 107 of The Game Case. I am Chris, also known as Cuddles, a brewmaster monk on Airy Peak in the Convert to Raid Guild. And I'm Turart, a Beast Mastery Hunter, also in the Convert to Raid Guild on Airy Peak Surfer. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about our week in gaming we're going to answer some questions from the Cuddle Crew, and then we're going to be talking to a man that not only do I respect, not only do I look up to, not only do I admire him for both his prowess in gaming and his utter refusal to wear a kilt at BlizzCon, but this man has created one of the most amazing communities on the internet. Um, he's an incredible podcaster. A, a great gentleman. He smells of huckleberries. Pat Crane, how are you doing tonight? Hello, guys. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, the Vikings just lost, so I'm kind of uh, I'm a little upset about that. But you know, that's all right. That's all right. It's a well, it's a fresh wound, but it's but it's it's a wound that happens every single year. So I'm getting kind of used to it at this point. I'm well, fine. we're so glad that you took time out of your extremely busy <laughs> schedule to come hang out with us this week. Um, besides the Vikings, how is the week of life going? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm, I, you know, the, the problem is, is that not only am I a Vikings fan, I'm also a Dallas Fuel fan. And um, yeah, yeah, it's not a good week for Dallas Fuel fans. Actually, I'm not really a strong Dallas Fuel fan. <laughs> they have yet to prove themselves to me. <laughs> so... I don't know, but it's going. It's it's going well. I mean, the, the nice thing is there's lots of stuff going on uh, right now in all things video games. No matter what you like, especially if you're a Blizzard gamer person, um, with all the esports going on and with all of the other stuff. I mean, with uh, 7.3.5 out on WoW now, that's awesome. Uh, and I'm a big Overwatch and Hearthstone player as well, so I no complaints. Except for seven three five, <laughs> you like, don't like it. Like, well, no, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that there were so, there were so many, um, so many bugs. Oh, so many like little things Sports. that people were like, you know, the forums went up in flames. I think it was basically like a half dozen times or more. The the forums just burned to the ground, just to the ground, with people just. All this, all this seething hate for some of the things like transmog stuff, and I, I don't even, I, I don't even understand most of it because I didn't experience it, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there was, there was a lot of um, viciousness going on. Goodness. Mm-hmm. So, T, what, what, what about you? You've been playing any games? Um, since we, it's been two weeks since we've last talked, um, for WoW related stuff, it's been all the five year. So I have been organizing donations and, um, if you sign up for the raffle, gifts will start going out tomorrow. And because you can only do 20 an hour, 20 an hour, probably take like a week to get them all out, but that's okay. That's fine. But I got all that organized. So Endgames has been a lot of, um, and I love it just organizing stuff and bank bags and getting things sorted. Um, outside of that. I overwatched a little bit. I still suck at it, but that's okay. You have fun. And I don't care if Lucio's an easy person to play because he's a healer. I kick butt at Lucio. I can play No, it. dude, dude, Lucio, <laughs> you know, the biggest the biggest thing with Lucio, there's there's a couple of different things, actually. 
Number one is wall riding. So if you yeah. can, if you figure out how to ride on the walls, that's awesome. And then the other thing is booping people off into the abyss. So like on those control points, uh, on like Ilios is like the big example, right? Um, oh, where you can just like boop people off the the walls and stuff. If you could do that, that's awesome. The healing stuff is easy because that's all passive and stuff. But wow. booping people off and and wall riding, those are the two things that you got to work on. That's so it. He's fun. I love him. He's a lot of fun. It's awesome. Uh, and then um, I finally figured out how to fly an Elite Dangerous. And let me tell you guys, joysticks and thruster, it's hard. It's really hard. And I thought because I was, I played like in the 80s, I did the, or I wasn't born in the 80s, but my parents lived in the 80s all through the 90s. Um, I played like games that had joysticks, so I thought I could do it. No, but I figured it out finally. So Elite Dangerous, I'm going to, I'm going to get you. Um and yeah, that's basically it. Still doing a little bit of the Warframe. And I logged into Hearthstone so I could get some free packs, and I still suck at that. I got beaten I, like three rounds. <laughs> I, I have a quick question. For yeah. Us. Um, so your parents lived in the 80s all through the 90s? Oh, Is my that what God, you said? yes. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> I remember my mom putting, like, bright green eyeliner on me and, like, purple eyeshadow. And, like, no, the 80s uh -huh. did not stop in 90 my 80s went through 2000 like i didn't know that this was not fashion that this this had this had ended no that's awesome um, from music choice to fashion um tv shows we watch movies we, yeah like the 80s were i may be a 90s kid but no i the 80s were in my house that's all awesome through. That was bad. It was super bad. Um, but Cuddles, you're always busy. What have you been up to? I know you had a, a convention in there. Yeah, I uh, I went out to pack south in San Antonio. It was an absolute pleasure. San Antonio is a beautiful, like, little town for a cop. Um, it's big enough that there's, like, things to do, but there's, like, a river walk there that's, I don't know, seven or eight miles long. And there's everything that you would need right on that river walk or... If you go up one simple flight of stairs and then down another flight of stairs into the basement underneath a McDonald's, you find the one bar that everybody hangs out at in San Antonio. Um, <laughs> I, I heard it dubbed the uh, the McDonald's Rave Dungeon, I believe. <laughs> um, it That's was, fun. Uh, yeah, no, it was. It, it's exactly what you would expect out of a bar like that. Uh, but no, like, so cool to get to hang out with a bunch of amazing people, um, including uh, Grumpy Frog in uh, CTR. Her uh, wow. her nephew, actually, not Grumpy. Oh. But her nephew, yay. Um, her nephew came over and said hi. Mark Conan was there. Um, we got to do Korean barbecue because we missed that in Anaheim. And uh, I'm sure I played some video games. Um Oh, I played some uh, I played some Destiny 2. Kind of getting a little bit obsessed with that one. And uh outside of that, um I tried some Overwatch because, you know, much like Shroud did for me with PUBG, Overwatch League has made me think, "Oh, hey, I can do that." <laughs> and no, no I can't. It's uh I can't do that. So, yeah, it's been it's been a whole lot of fun. Um but I'm I'm excited for there's there's so much there's so much coming out like in the next few weeks and months and so much to be looking forward to. Um, what are you what what are you looking forward to most? Is there is there like one thing or like a couple of different things or or what? Because I'm I'm genuinely curious. Um, I know we're not going to get it soon, but I'm already like it's it's tickled the back of my head is uh, Battle for Azeroth. Sure. Oh, yeah. Like sure. definitely battle for Azeroth. Um and then like for so, a few things to be done. Um Escape from Tarkov, I really want to see that blossom. Um that seems like something that I could really dive headfirst into. Um and then there's actually and I hate to do this and I don't I don't mean to do this like to do this like this. But um I I actually have two games that I'm under NDA about that I can't talk about. That's awesome. <laughs> that I that's really, great. I really want to see come out, and and yeah, that's all I can say. But those, those, I'll tell you what, those two games are driving my excitement probably harder than anything else. Um, that's great. So yeah, just yeah, I think a lot of cool stuff. Overwatch League, as it develops, is super exciting because you're actually like the 
and I hate making this comparison, but how excited people get about their college football team that they've graduated from 30 years ago. Like people mm-hmm. are behind this and you have this camaraderie for teams, but in gaming. And so as this moves forward, and I know there's been some uh, kerfluffles on some mm-hmm. of the teams, but as it moves forward, just seeing this develop into something that, you know, as nerds, we get to kind of rally behind and support. Right. Well, and, and and it is actually pretty cool because uh, Overwatch League, you know, when we heard about, you know, the league starting up, we're like, okay, this is, this could be kind of fun. This could be cool, whatever. And then, and then they said, oh, and guess what? And the teams are going to be from a location. That's cool. I, I'm a, I was like, yep. Okay. That's awesome. And then we started seeing these teams come in, the players come in and, and uh, started seeing them kind of, we're starting to see them. Some of the teams, anyway, still still start to gel together and and all that kind of stuff. But uh, but it's been an interesting look into how you build professional esports, especially with with all the problems that they've had, right? Because they've oh, had yeah. they've had some serious problems. Where I mean, not only things uh, like visas, <laughs> making sure that like the entire Philadelphia team could get oh. into the country. Um, number one. But then they've also had some issues with uh, some problems with these gamers figuring out what being a professional gamer is, being a professional sports person is. Forget the E. Who oh, yeah, cares about the sport. E? It's, it's about being a professional sportsman. Sportsman? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but But being in professional sports, what does that mean? What does that look like? What can you do and what can't you do and I, we're finding out all of the things that people can't do right now <laughs> you can't um go against tos nope yep really oh, i'm not gonna budge on that. Like, which good for them like good yeah, for them right you can't go against tos guys uh sorry that's kind of like a non-starter for us uh <laughs> you can't uh like Hey, let's not slam people on twitter and such and let's you know Keep it all above board and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, it's just we're finding out what professional sports looks like through these through these guys, through these. I can call them kids because they're, they're <laughs> young. They're, they're half my age. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm so super glad they're holding them to standards because when I when we first heard about Overwatch League, and I apologize. I was like, oh, it's just going to be a bunch of bros. Like, I don't want to deal with a bunch of just mm-hmm. brosifs doing stuff. But no, they're, like you said, TOS, you can't be, you have to follow that. You can't right. be out on Twitter being like, right. beep, beep, and, beep, 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 beep. And we've seen some really fun stuff, too. I mean, like, oh, yeah. if, you, if you just look at the teams in general and how they are getting along together, and, and if you've uh, followed their Twitter accounts and stuff like that, they're showing a lot of their fun side over there. They're doing a lot of different stuff with, um, like, showcasing players and teams and stories uh, within the league um, on Overwatch League and, and beyond. And and we've seen like teams like Dallas Fuel, like they put out these really funny meme type of things on, on social media. And, and so it's just been a, it's been a real treat in a lot of ways as well. So it's, it's been kind of on both sides of it. We were, we're figuring out what this professional sports league is all about. So. I also love, I think playing games still has that stigma. And um, we talked about this. We talked about this with the converted, last the converted we had. Some people are still closet nerds. Like they don't want people to know that they play WoW and stuff. But you see people out sporting their team's logo and stuff. It's really, I think, taking that step forward to, you know, gaming isn't the 40 year old living in his mom basement with Cheeto fingers. Sure. Well, and it was really great. So like, yesterday, I was out on the town. And I was out on the uh, Minneapolis has a light rail system, and I was out on the light rail system because we were going around to a bunch of different uh, breweries, and we were like doing, you know, so I didn't want to drive. So, uh, <laughs> so we were on the LRT, and um, and this guy comes in. He's talking on the phone. He's got his got his earbuds in. He's talking on the phone with a buddy of his, and all I hear is, uh, Farah. Oh, you know, uh, Mercy. Torbjorn, you know, like all the names. He's like, well, you, I mean, obviously you're not going to play the best Torbjorn, you know, and he's just this cool, he's a cool cat. I mean, he looked like he was a really cool dude and, you know, put together a, a upstanding member of the community, 
maybe. I don't know. It's really, <laughs> he looked like he, he looked like a good guy, though. And so I was like, all right, cool. I like this. And he didn't get off the phone because if you if he would have got off the phone, I would have said, so uh, who's your team? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, but it was just it was just kind of nice. And, and I think that Overwatch is one of those games. If I go out of the house with an Overwatch shirt on, people will talk to me. If I go out with a WoW shirt on, not so much, right? But if you go out with an Overwatch shirt on, people are like, oh, yeah, I love that game. Who are you playing? I get that all the time when I go out. It's weird. It's cool. It's like a gateway to other things. I love it. It's bringing people together who wouldn't. Like you said, the... When you say the cool cat, like I have an image in my head, and it's not someone who I would imagine like playing Overwatch. I, mean, I don't know if that's yeah, what it looks I, like. I, but I w- if I would have if I would have seen him on the street, I would have said, "No way, there's no way." Yeah, he's but, he's too busy hanging out in coffee shops, uh, in uh, having I don't like, know figures in like cappuccino made some kind of fancy drink in his hand, you know, some sort of fifteen dollar beverage in some <laughs> I don't know. It was it was water. Yeah, probably. probably. Lime water. Yeah, he's he's even he's even like too good for for to have a booze drink. He's like, no, I'm saving myself for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The organic <laughs> limes were harvested yeah. under the light of the blue moon this exactly. week. Exactly. So the goddess smiles <laughs> upon us. I don't know. You're kind of. You're kind of what? going away from Cool Cat and kind of more into, yeah, I, I don't would, know, sketchy like, territory. Took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm I'm curious, and I you mentioned you mentioned the uh, the Dallas Fuel. Mm-hmm. How did you, without our teams, like obviously they gave these teams names of places, but all the play being held in the uh, in the Blizzard Arena. Like I'm curious how people are. Are picking their their home team like for me, Florida. Um, they're in Miami, so no, I'm out. Um, <laughs> there's there's hey. nothing that I enjoy being not in Miami about anything about Miami sports. Sure. Um, so I went with the Gladiators because okay, they had the prettiest colors. Yeah, and I think I think right now everybody's trying to figure it out, right? So it's not necessarily about the location it's about the players or it's about the team colors or it's about how fun they've been on social media or something along those lines right um i would think that you know like the the three teams the actual three teams that i'm I'm not necessarily a dallas fuel fan but uh three of the teams that that i was attracted to immediately one was the san francisco shock because i'm a sound guy and i love their logo (laughs) Right? It is a cool logo. Nice. So, and the other one is Florida Mayhem because all I can think about is playing Junkrat as Florida Mayhem. You know, I mean, it's awesome, right? Uh, and then the other one was uh, New York XL. Okay. Oh wait, there was another one. Soul Dynasty was the other Ooh, yeah. one. Soul Dynasty is pretty cool, and I liked those guys before I knew who was on the team because the logo is that strong. <laughs> it really it's is. Good. It's good. So, yeah, I mean, those those four teams were really stood out to me. And now I'm trying to figure out what's best. The Houston's Outlaw logo was pretty clever. Like when I saw that, I'm like, it's a school. Oh, nope, it's two guns. That's nifty. Right. I liked it. I thought it was clever. It's it's really and the colors are really cool, too. I know the black. It's sleek. Yeah. The gray and the neon green. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I'm just sitting here looking at all the logos now because I only knew a couple of them. Anyway, <laughs> see, I went. Yeah, I, was, I was like, I was like, no, that one looks like the New Orleans Saints. Like mm-hmm. that looks like a Giants <laughs> outfit. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then I think it was down to it was down to London or L.A. But then I realized, like it's you LA, mentioned, being no. a sa- <laughs> well, uh, purple and white. So I already had like, half my wardrobe as a Twitch guy. Half my wardrobe is <laughs> sure. already purple and white. So. Sure. I'm on board. I have the most apparel for the gladiators. And they haven't done too badly either. They're they're okay. I mean, they're not great or anything like that, but but they're Usually how my they're hanging teams in. go. They're hanging in. It's only week two. We don't know where it's going. No. So I take a turn. Don't ask me yeah. to pick a champion. I would in fact bet on not the gladiators. 
That's true. Yeah, I would I would also bet on not the gladiators. <laughs> I would definitely bet on not the Shanghai Dragons. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Uh, Boston, Florida, not too well either. Uh, you think maybe one in no. three? Okay. I, I don't. I would probably bet against them before I bet on them. But <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, that Lord. this is actually like this is actually a discussion that we're having, and like, right a, a public like. Like this isn't something like niche, like oh that three v three WoW PVP tournament this weekend. Yeah, like this is well, there is big time now. Well, yeah, and esports is really kind of taken over, and and it right has. now, especially in especially this time of the year, there's a lot of different things going on because we had HCT, which is the Hearthstone World Championships this last weekend, and uh, and uh, Tom O, I can't remember his numbers, but Tom won, and so that was really great. And then uh, HGC, which is the Heroes of the Storm stuff, that season just started over this last weekend. And then you have Overwatch League, and I'm sure that there's a StarCraft II tournament somewhere going on. I think there's always one, yeah, somewhere. And then in a couple of weeks, we have uh, Arena starting up for WoW. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a it's a good time for for esports in general. And then And then, of course, you always have you know, lol and, and stuff like that going on. So I think Heroes really opened because I remember when the Heroes tournament stuff first started, it was the same thing. People were picking teams, although there's a lot of switching of the teams in that one. <laughs> um, but people yeah. were wearing, they were like excited. They were talking about logos. They were tweeting out like hashtags. Like it can get open the door, but Overwatch really just shoved that door open was like, here we are. And and now and now um, Method is actually in the HGC. Yeah. Well. So that's awesome. Because uh, a lot of people love, I mean, a lot of WoW players love me Method because of all the, all the uh, raid stuff that they've done and and everything like that. So we know we know those guys, just in general. And so now it's a new team for a lot of WoW people to kind of look at and possibly root for, or root against. <laughs> Either way, yeah, yeah they're, it's one of those. I think Method is kind of like um like the Cowboys. You either love them or you hate them. Like there is no. Yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's nothing else. It's a fine line. It's like either you love them or they they're total scum. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I like them. I like them. I'm good. I'm I'm okay with them. <laughs> right on. Why don't we just we just spent a lot of time talking about esports? Yeah. Why don't Why don't we take a few moments and uh, and talk about you, Pat? Tell us a little bit about the man behind the mic. Oh gosh. Um. Okay. Uh. What would you? What? Okay. So, what would you like to know? What? What kind this. of? This is in <laughs> chat. This. What do you want to know about Pat? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> we hung out. So, so this and I hung out a lot at uh, BlizzCon this year, and that was that. It's always it's always fun hanging out with somebody new, um, and especially uh, somebody who who doesn't necessarily understand when you're uh, totally uh, like throwing a bunch of BS around, right? <laughs> you do that? <laughs> what? No, no, Never. I don't do that at all. Uh, so, uh, cause we, cause uh, I think she started uh, coming on the show like late this summer. Um, and so we, we kind of got to know each other a little bit, but then we were hanging out at BlizzCon like all the time because we, um, I gave her a media media pass for CTR so that she could be a part of a couple of different things and and whatever, um, and so we were hanging a lot out a lot behind the scenes and uh, I was uh, we were you know we got to know each other pretty well and then every once in a while you just slide in just a little bit of BS just a little bit of BS just to see how somebody reacts to it and then they go you can always tell it's like they're fl they're trying to figure it out <laughs> are you actually saying a thing that is real or are you just totally messing with me right now and usually uh when it's me on the other end of that i'm totally messing with you <laughs> that's just the way it goes it's just the way it goes so you know <laughs> uh what else what else do you want to know cuddles uh, or, or t what was your first car Oh, my first car. 
Uh, I have stories about this one, actually. Dude, uh, I knew this so, was going to happen. Hey, you know, you want, <laughs> you want a guy that talks a lot uh, to talk even more? Just bring up a subject. We'll, we'll make it work. Um, so my first car was a Toyota pickup. So it was, okay. it was a pickup truck. It was like a little one. You know, they're made out of aluminum foil, and they have rear, rear wheel drive, stuff like that. So really great. Uh, winter car for Minnesota. Really light rear wheel drive, slide all over the place, right? Uh, and I went to school up in uh, the Fargo area and I lived down in uh, the Minneapolis area. So there was, it's like a three or four hour drive. And I remember uh, one time I was driving back to school in a blizzard oh, in God. this Toyota pickup truck, really light Toyota pickup truck. And I was going, I was probably, you know, hour and a half away from home and uh, going over this, going over this bridge. And, you know, I was a young guy, didn't have a lot of experience with driving, you know, long distances in a blizzard for sure. Um, and I was on this bridge and I, I must have gassed it or something like that because my back end just went, woo, just went whipped right out. And I'm like, oh, no, I was on this bridge, fishtailing out, and I correct, but I overcorrect. And so I fishtail out the other way. Woo! And then I correct again. And this time it goes, -zoo -zoo -zoo! And I turn around. I do a 180 on the freeway going 55 plus miles an hour. And I end up ba going backwards down the damn freeway. And so all I'm looking at are the lights of people coming my way. And I, <laughs> there was one, there was only one word that came to mind and I said it repeatedly. <laughs> and it, uh, and it, and well, it started with an F. I'll Fire just say truck. that. Fire yep. truck. And I just said that for like a minute, solid. And it was, and at first it was very panicked. And then I'm like, okay, I got to get off the road, right? So I go to get off the road uh, and I'm driving backwards again. I don't have much experience with driving backwards at 50 miles an hour plus. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll just try to edge off the road and land on the shoulder somehow, whatever. And, um, and that didn't happen. I, I narrowly missed. You know those, okay, so you know those uh, road signs, the one that say, you know, hey, it's 20 miles to the next town, and then it's... Oh, the big green ones? The huge ones. Yeah, right? yeah. Those ginormous ones that are like 20 feet wide? Yeah. I missed that by about a foot. Ooh. <laughs> missed it by about a foot, and I ended up backing into a snowbank and spinning around so I was perpendicular to the road. No way in hell I was going to get out. <laughs> So uh, that's when my dad said, hey, you know, I think I think I might be able to uh, chip in some, uh, some money for a new car for you. <laughs> nice. What do you think? What do you think? And maybe we should make it four wheel drive. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, he was a little he was a little nervous after that. I, yeah, it was, I, well, God. it was pretty good. It was a good time. <laughs> So that's my uh, that's my uh, pickup truck story. Like having having driven in the snow before and fishtailed a little, I can see this all happening because yeah. I've almost been there before. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. I mean, and and you know, I uh, growing up in Minnesota, you you learn about ice real quick, right? I mean, yeah. you learn about you learn about things like and Iowa and in upper Midwest just in general, you learn how to like drive on a lake. Yeah, I'm sure. Cuddles, you probably nope. have never you this nope. is like an nope. idea that is so foreign to you, right? He's like, water no so way could you is like ever you're on, you're get on a, me driving on a lake ever. You're on a jet ski, right? You're on a jet <laughs> ski driving on a lake. <laughs> no, we're on, we're on we're in a car. We're driving on the lake in a car. And so, you know, I mean you that you learn how to do that because that's where some of the activities are. They're out on the lake. So yeah. you just go out there. And uh <laughs> So I, you know, I've learned all that stuff, but nothing will prepare you for going backwards on the freeway at fifty plus miles an hour, even on dry land. 
minus even without all the ice and the snow and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if anybody's really ready for that. You know? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody. Uh, Carlos, I think you should try it just on the freeway around you. Just go backwards on the freeway at let like us know. Like four. Let's just start off at forty. Yeah, it'll I be back. That... <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I could call yes. back in and I could give you updates. It'd be perfect. Right. I say Florida's mostly older people, so they're probably asleep by now. It's like eleven there, so it's you should safe. be good. They roll yeah. up the roads on Sunday. Like as soon as Wheel of Fortune's <laughs> over, they roll the roads up and turn all the lights off. It's fine. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, Bruce Knee uh, says, "I have a question uh, yes. about the early days before WoW." Oh my gosh! <sighs> Do you guys have a sorted uh, video game past before uh, before WoW? Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah. T, what was yours? Um, well, I I actually told this story. Um, I grew up playing video games. Like, my parents would take their Nintendo or their Super Nintendo to my grandparents' house who had a one. And they'd hook it up to a second TV and they'd race, like, in Dig Dug or oh, nice. Mario Kart. Like, I grew up with video games. Um, my grandma had a brain aneurysm playing Dr. Mario. Like, she was playing it and then, like, brain aneurysm. Um, so, no, that's always – it's never been a, a foreign concept to me. Mm -hmm. Um so I've always played, and I was always player two because my, my dad had to be player one. So I didn't understand player two sucks because if player one does really well, like you never play. Um, right. But yeah, so I grew up playing Nintendo all the way up. Um, and like my parents got us a, the SNES classic for Christmas. Yeah. And now Miles is playing those games. Awesome. And he plays Street Fighter 2. And he button mashes. And that's all he does is just hit buttons and he beats me. And I'm that's like, all anybody ever does in that game. <laughs> I've been playing this longer than you've been alive. Like, and you're no, no, but right. no, yeah, I've, I've always played video games, always, right? Uh, and Cuddles, how about you? What was it? so, Cuddles? I know that you're a big video game guy. Uh, what were uh, like video games before WoW that really stood out to you? Like, like just a couple. Oh, wow. Um, if you if you could narrow it down, so WoW, WoW got me in, WoW got me into um into PC gaming. Before that, I was just a console guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would have to say, we we were talking about it over on Twitter earlier today, but um, Dragon um, Dragon Warrior on the original NES. Okay. It was the first game that drew me in and actually was more than just a pickup, put down. Kind of like, I, I played Tecmo Super Bowl for hours upon hours. But mm -hmm. the first time that I really felt invested in a game was dragon warrior um and since then i think uh i think skyrim um on oh, console sure soul kind of gave yeah. me the same sort of like th those games always um always have a special place in my heart and they they always seem to earn their special place regardless of their little like issues it's 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 always the the rpgs that really bring me back to to my center of gaming Right. Well, and, and for me, so, I mean, I was, uh, I like to call myself OG, original gamer. Because, <laughs> because, because like, you know, I, when I was a little tiny kid, uh, the Pong console, I, yes. I guess, was, was out. So, like, I grew up with Pong, number one, which is ridiculous <laughs> nowadays. But then Atari, you know, I mean, like, I, I played a lot of Pitfall as a kid and then i did a lot of arcade gaming so um like dragon's age um uh no sorry dragon's lair uh that was the quarter eater as far as i'm concerned <laughs> really cool game and i now have it for my ipad and i'm like oh my god i love this game <laughs> and yet it's so frustrating uh the other one was oh god there was an olympic one it was track and field um the uh, there was an olympic one where you had to have a a uh, half a pencil, so you could uh, min max your your running and stuff like that because you had to press two buttons at the same time. Oh my god! You had to do that, right? Yep. And so the way that you would do it is you'd have a pencil, and a half just... pencil, and then then just tap one side, and then you'd be like, money, right? You'd be like, awesome, and <laughs> just like these terrible, terrible games, Pac Man Junior and Super Pac Man, and I don't even know what it, what the hell. 
Frogger. My dad loved Frogger. Um, but uh, and then I think one of the the first game that really stood out to me ever, ever was on N64. Okay. And it was Conker's Bad Fur Day. Conker's Bad Fur Day, if you don't know anything about it, look it up. Watch the videos because it was so wrong, <laughs> which made it so right. It was just one giant poop joke. That's all it was. It's I just remember this giant this one. Okay. poop joke. So I mean, like there was a, like there was a there was a um there was a you go into this you go into this cave filled with poop and you have to feed the poop monster uh uh kernels of corn, sweet corn. And then he would appear. <laughs> oh my just god. Just stupid. And he would sing opera. He was singing opera while you were trying to kill him, while you were trying to throw rolls of toilet paper into his mouth so and to to kill him or whatever. And then oh. I mean, like all this stuff. Amazing, amazing game. Great story. So funny. So wrong. And this was before uh before South Park. So <laughs> and then South Park came out and I just it just lost it. You know. So uh, that was that was kind of it. And then for PC gaming, for MMO, well, I guess it wasn't really an MMO. Um, uh, I was a Second Life guy for a while where I was just like building stuff. But I know, like I, how I, you I immediately I defend that. You're like, I was a Second Life guy. I was just building things, though. I wasn't, I wasn't on, on the other side. I wasn't on the other side of Second Life, which was like <laughs> the dark side of Second Life. The dark side of Second Life, that which, was which was total porn i mean it was just it was oh like either you either you built stuff or it's just all porn it was just like i what no i just want to build stuff the building stuff is cool i think I my know. first minus like the the minesweeper and stuff that came on a pc my first pc game was something called majesty mm -hmm. and it's like you have a castle and you try and level up your castle and collect taxes. Then you have like quests you have to do. Like sometimes a dragon will come or the witch queen will come or something like that. Um, and of course there are cheats and I always did it to get gold because you had to have gold to build things up. Sure. But that was the first game I remember just like coming home from school and be like, all right, I'm going to go play Majesty and booting up the old like Windows 95. Right. Well, I, I did um, like AOL gaming and stuff like that. Muds oh, yeah. Guys. Um, yeah, it was uh, – gosh, what was the – I can't remember. Was it Fed Two? I think it was Federation Two, was the game that I played, and it was weird. I mean, it's it's like Zork, but it's like everybody makes up their own Zork game, and <laughs> and you can talk to each other. It's pretty great. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good time. My, mine good time. was a, a a Star Trek based RP mod. Oh, nice! And it was exactly as nerdy as that sounds. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. you, you had a bunch of nerds being able to connect for the first time over the internet via text right. in this game that had no real like and center then, or core the best part was at the end of the month when you get the AOL bill because they were oh built by the minute or whatever <laughs> and, and, you, and you go damn it what am I doing with my life why is this so expensive I remember we had the CDs that had like 100 minutes uh, or that, something like yeah. that and my I, dad worked for the city, so he got he would they would just hand them them, but it sure. was terrible. <laughs> I I found one when I was moving a few years ago, and <laughs> I found one. And I was like, "Oh my god, I have to no, I'm throwing this away immediately. <laughs> just throwing it against a wall to break. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Oh god, oh, all I want to do. I'm so yeah. glad we've advanced as far as internet has gone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Well, it's say. too bad. It's too bad Skype couldn't, uh, you know, join us in in it. this yeah in this new century. I I but. forgot to send them my my twenty four hour free CD. No, oh, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Skype needs I to do that. Insert pipes. They, need to, they need to send out free CDs. <laughs> this will allow Skype to work for twenty three minutes. <laughs> Enjoy, <laughs> and that's how that's how they right, resource get, things out. You get one call, dude. <laughs> one call. That's it. Oh, uh, you gonna talk to the boss in L.A. or you you gonna join right. that conference call with the boys in Jersey? Mm hmm. It's on you. <laughs> oh, Skype. In his office. It's horrible. Mm hmm. Oh, good mm -hmm. lord.
You've well, got mail. I forgot that. Oh, okay, let's see. let's do a show where we're going to end up reminiscing about it. Well, no, it's, well, I just wanted to ask. <laughs> speaking of reminiscing, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on this week, um, convert to raid. It yeah. hit five years yesterday. I know that's amazing. It's so great. It's and so you, it's it's so awesome. Five years. I, that's I that's old. They're in, we're in kindergarten now, guys. We're doing it's basic huge. math. Um, it's it's huge deal. It really is. But you were one of the the OGs for creating yeah. this guild that the original guild in original this, guild. In this case. Yeah, yeah. Convert to raid one. I was um, in convert to raid one. <laughs> <laughs> Those are still some of the funniest fights that, like, because I had just become an officer or like the event point or whatever, and yeah. people were literally like, "I need to be in convert to raid one." Was your raid right. team there? No. Right, and it's like so. So okay, just to step back for those guys yes. that don't know exactly where we're at. So uh, five years ago, we announced the we announced the guild uh, on the on the uh, convert to raid show, and we were like, okay, we'll expect you know, people that would be coming in here. And, and we didn't know exactly how many people were going to show up. And and we were kind of taken back by how many people really wanted to be a part of the guild. It was kind of amazing because, like, the first month, I think we filled up most of one guild. Yep. And it was kind of crazy. And then the second month, we had started our second guild. And then by the third month, I think we had three and four. four. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it was... And, and we were like, I, I don't know how we're going to designate these things. So I, let's just do numbers because I'm like, because that's easy. Because then we could just do convert trade one, convert trade two, convert trade three. And then we could just go through the thing. People did not like that. <laughs> they did. They really did not like that at all. And uh, because if they're in four, obviously they're not as good as if they were in one, even though there is no designation other than the number to tell you what's going on so if you're in four obviously you're a you're a piece of crap player because you know you're in four you're not in one that's awesome <laughs> no it's first come first serve pal you know let's go so we had to uh we had to switch it around and we were like going okay so what can we do <laughs> how can how can we designate this a little bit and uh decided on world bosses because that was easy and try try to grab it from a bunch of different uh, expansions and stuff like that but you know obviously now we gotta i don't know there are lots of world bosses right now <laughs> tons and we're not making any more guilds we're not doing it no we, we mm -hmm. have plenty of room plenty of room so we're good <laughs> right right uh. I, I just remember doing invites like one of the first invites i was i don't know i was in ctr3 or something i don't know and someone's like i need to be in ctr1 and i was like okay like is your raid team there or something like oh no it's just number one i was like are you right. serious right now right. it's like, just number one that's the what? only reason i want to be in in there so many emails uh and then and but it was but it was really uh fun and it was really interesting and it was a, a steep learning curve <laughs> on how to uh build a guild and uh we learned uh kind of the hard way on on a lot of that stuff because we were that was when we were going through um engine.com yeah as well so we had everybody sign up through engine and then we would get them on the blah, blah, blah. you know it's like oh man yeah that's a trip right talking about engine um and uh and so yeah it was just it was there were so many people and you couldn't keep track of anybody and we had no idea what we were doing whatsoever and now and now when when i think about it i'm like I haven't invited anybody into the guild in forever <laughs> because because number one, we have such a great crew to to help out with that stuff. Number number one, that's the biggest thing. Get a lot of people to help. And then number two is get systems in place so that everything makes sense. And so we did that, I think relatively quickly, but it was but it, you know, it's an evolving process and all that kind of stuff. And and now we're now we're comfortable. Yes. So now we've got to blow up the entire system. That's what we've got to do. And then start over again. That's all that. I mean, we're no, the website, so we're just going to make it all. So, um, oh yeah, but it was, but it was so cool to, to um, watch this thing grow. And, and over time we made a lot of mistakes and, and we probably pissed off a lot of people and, and uh, other people though. I mean, it's overall, it's been a really great experience. And a lot of people are 
really happy. And a lot of people, some people have found love through yeah. Convert to Raid Guild. Uh, some people have found um, uh, a couple of trolls. You know, I mean, you know, it cuts both ways. <laughs> it's a zest. Um, but it's been it's been a lot of fun and it's been it's been super special and and it's and meaningful for me. Um, and I hope that it has for everybody that's been, you know, especially those long term uh, guild members. I mean, that's. It's been a wild time. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Gosh. I remember <laughs> the one of the memories that stands out was one of the first town halls we had. Mumble had a limit or because uh, you had to buy like, like back uh, in Mumble days. Had a limit on how many people you could have in it, and we reached it. Oh yeah! And Pat's like, "I need to find out if we can make this bigger." Yeah. Thank God, Discord. Thank you, Discord. Well, and and so I did. So it was because I think we had, um, because we got a deal to do the mumble thing through a through a contact. Essentially, we. I mean, we started up the the mumble server, and and in talking with the guy, he's like, "Oh no, we can totally do this, and I can give you like a." a code if you, I don't know, whatever it was. And, uh, but yeah, you could only have like a hundred people on at a time or something like that. We're like, okay, cool. At the beginning, we had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we had zero clue. And then that first town hall meeting, I think we had 300 people. Yeah. And we had, we had increased it to 300. We're like, I have no idea what's going to happen here. And we reached the limit on that. And then they had just had to watch on Twitch. It was like, thank God for Twitch too. I mean, yes. Otherwise, otherwise those <laughs> those first town hall meetings would have been um, not as large. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty wild. So I don't know. It's weird times. Thinking back in the mumble days. Oh, mumble. I finally deleted mumble off of my computer. I put it in a. I don't think I'm ever gonna need this again. So yeah. It was it was a sad moment. I haven't. I haven't opened I haven't opened Mumble in probably a year. And the only reason that I did that was because somebody said that they were having problems on the Mumble server. <laughs> and then I went, how do I log in? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do again? How do how do I even log in? What's my login? I don't know. God. <laughs> yeah. That was are there any um well, we talked about a couple, but are there any like memories or situations that stand out over the past five years? Oh my! Um, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> let's see. There was okay. So there was a speaking of mumble. I'll just real quick. Uh, Channel five. Oh, was, Channel five. Channel five. That was a memory. Um, those guys were weird. <laughs> But you know they were trying the, trying a thing, and I'm like, okay, you can try your thing. That's fine. <laughs> sometimes it blew up, and sometimes it didn't. They were going for more adult type of things. Humor. Yep. Yeah. And it. Yeah. That. Yep. That got quelched a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for those of us that have no clue what's going on here, I need a better explanation. Well. It was, <sighs> it was just a hangout, I think, with the understanding that adult humor was going to be happening was yeah. how it was presented to when I when it first started. Sure. sure. And, you okay. know, it's it's kind of like one of those things where the Convert to Red Guild is is uh, uh, open to everybody. And we, and we try to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and safe and try to provide a place for people to, you know, at least in the in all the all of the public areas uh, so that. You don't have to deal with all the crap that you normally have to deal with with some gaming communities. No toxicity, no, uh, no swearing. You know, no, no, not a lot of bad language anyway. If if somebody says something, it's pretty infrequent, hopefully, um, and frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Channel Five was uh, they they went for something else. So, and sometimes mm. sometimes it was maybe just a little much. I don't want to go into it necessarily, but <laughs> but we got reports, you know. Nice. Yeah. No, it was good. Um, I'm trying to think of other other big things from the guild stuff. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, I I think it's just kind of more about the friendships you make. Oh yeah. Really, and more and 
more about kind of your teams and and all that kind of stuff, especially as we moved into Discord. I mean, it's a, it's definitely become more team centric centric, um, and kind of more about uh, meeting people and all that kind of stuff. So well, it's all it's all good. And then uh, like things like like events it's like kind of the, uh, say. well, there's BlizzCon stuff, but there's also um, like when the choppers first came out, Solar Flare gathered like yeah. 50 people together and they all went on their choppers fun. around and did stuff. So, you know, little things like that. Goodness. <laughs> so much stuff. Solar was actually, he's the one that invited me in the guild. So I remember that because I had no idea. <laughs> Solar was Solar was a maniac when it when we first started. He was like on all the time yep. inviting people and everything like that. And I'm like, I was trying to do my part and I'd probably put like four or five hours in on just inviting people. And it was seriously, it was like every five, 10 minutes. Somebody else would say, hey, can I come in? Sure. <laughs> Here you go. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. And the CTR parties have grown at BlizzCon too over the five years from the stories yeah. I've been told from the small little room. <sighs> that small little room. <laughs> Man, I tell you, and I don't know, uh, uh, Cuddles, you were doing some stuff for um, Con Before the Storm, right? Yes. And it, that was essentially where we had it. That was essentially where we had the first uh, CTR party was in those back rooms in the fourth floor of the Hilton. And so it has, you know, I think there were the Ooh. one that you were, I think the one that you were in was like three sections. Yeah. Of the, of the like this expandable room thing that had four sections. Mm -hmm. We had all four sections. Okay. So we had all four sections, but it was still that low ceiling thing. And when you pack a thousand people in there. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, no bueno. Not not good at all. So much sweat. Oof. So <laughs> much nerd sweat. And you already Just... have a crowd that that their their hygiene habits are probably questionable at best. <sighs> So they're yeah. not coming in smelling right. like fresh washed linen. And then it just, right. yeah, no, it amplifies. That's the thing. No, right. And and I was actually standing at one point, I was standing directly underneath one of the AC vents. And I could not feel it. <laughs> oh, I couldn't even feel a breeze. <laughs> it was so hot and stagnant in there. I couldn't feel anything other than my own sweat just my own like i was coated oh. you know just gross it was pretty fun <laughs> it was pretty fun it was it was a good time best time of my life it was life. a good time we had a good time and then and then we were like uh, we really need a different room so yeah. and 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 it's been great and so like this year um this last year i mean we have have it down to where we have a ballroom and and we had 3,000 people or so come through. Um, and we had, you know, all sorts, we talked to all sorts of people. Cuddles, you talked to all, all sorts of people. And, and we saw everybody, I think. Yeah. Literally everybody. All of them. Every time, every time the cam would go to the, the room view, I was like, hey, I, there's a, I know these floor, guys. Or there's, there's that person. It was oh, so amazing to see. Um, yeah, it's come a yeah. long way. It was the who's who of of uh, WoW influencers and developers and such. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I was pretty happy. Other than the live stream totally bailing. We, but, we have some things. Huh? It was we'll, fun. Uh, we'll we'll make it work. About. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. We, we have some stuff to work on. We do. And As always. So yeah, this, this year it's the live stream. It'll be fine. Yeah. We'll make it happen. <laughs> um. Well, this Ted mentioned it earlier, and I don't think we can have you on a podcast without talking about your puppies. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, How are the little see. darlings? Uh, let me uh, let me show you. Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, I'm try I was going to try to show you a picture, but apparently my battery uh, is running low. So I'm not going to do that. But uh, they're great. So I have, I have two dogs. I have a um, chocolate lab, and she is three years old. Um, and then I have a, a fairly youngish puppy who is now just over a year and her name is Daisy and she's um, like a, uh, she's a lab cross, but it's like lab mixed with 
American Staffordshire Terrier. Oh, so okay. Kind of, she's like a pit pit bull type, um, but it's mixed in with a bunch of other stuff. She's a mutsky, but um, she has that kind of face and stuff like that. Very, very cute. She she uh, still looks like a little tiny puppy. She as does. Far as I'm concerned. Oh my god. And they are so cute together. They cuddle together, and when they do, it's just a it's just, it melts your heart. It really oh. does. <laughs> and then when they're running around, they're a bunch of jerks. That's <laughs> that's my story. They are a bunch of jerks when they're just out running around in the yard, and and yeah, they don't want to come in. They don't want to listen to me. Jerks. <laughs> so they're like toddlers. <laughs> like toddlers. They're like yeah, cute when they're sleeping uh, and when they're awake. Daisy definitely is. Darla is like, oh no, I'll, uh, okay, fine, I'll listen to you, whatever. But Daisy's like, hey, look at me, I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Mm. <laughs> How about you come inside? <laughs> no, mm, I don't think so. I think I'll just be over here now. Oh my mm-hmm. goodness. Yep, chasing after after rabbits that really aren't there. So, yeah, 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 rabbits and squirrels. Sometimes a flea or not fleas, a leaves. We chase after oh, leaves. Yeah. 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 Good. yeah. Good times. Good times. <laughs> my dogs all want to eat each other, so we have to keep them contained in three different parts of the house. What Uh-oh. kind of dogs do you have? Uh, a Jack Russell, a Mutt, and a Basset Hound. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, what? Would you say that the mutt is mostly? I don't. She, so I have one dog that looks like a rat, one okay. that looks like a horrible caricature of something that like your four year old would draw at school, mm-hmm. um, in the Basset Hound, and then I just have my other dog just looks like a dog. Right. I, I don't know what she. I, I don't know. If she's kind of tall and lanky. The gold one. Yeah. All right. I, what does she look like? I think she has her. She has the ears that made me think that she had a little bit of pit in her when I saw the picture, but I don't know. I do not know. <sighs> well, post a picture tonight. You can get one of you can get one of those DNA tests. So we we oh uh, when God. when we got when we got Daisy, uh, uh, I was looking on Amazon, and you can actually get those pet DNA things, and I could get it the same day. Really? Do you know how tempting it is to when you just. This is how society works these days. You can get stuff delivered to your house same day within hours of you saying, no, I want this right now. I want this right now. And then it's there. And then it's just like, oh, now I can now I can use it and figure it out. And then you have to send it in. You have to wait a couple of weeks, which takes forever. I mean, <laughs> they can deliver it to your house in an hour, but uh, <laughs> they can't get your DNA results for a couple of weeks. What the, what the actual H? I don't know. <laughs> what the fire truck so yeah yeah uh so you can get the doggo dna uh test done and and it's uh it's actually kind of cool i may if have you to, want. i may have to now do this because I, I don't if, know if you want i mean it's it's money so i mean you know it's just basically like do i really want to know or do i want to like get a couple of cases of beer do i <laughs> what, what do i want to do i think beer is gonna win yeah, beer. Yeah. It's not bad. Not bad. All right. Or a nice bottle of something. All right. Well, I know we've kept you a little bit, but I do want to talk about one thing. Well, you do Battle.net news. Everyone knows yep. that. You should know that. But and now Battle.net Sports. Now, yes, Battle.net Sports, which is so exciting. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why we talked about esports at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> I'm um, sure. Podcast Launchpad is something. At, it's been a year now, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's it's so like at the beginning of last year, I released a um, uh, a booklet, essentially online booklet, um, called Podcast Launchpad, and you can still go over there and you can still get it for free, and you can still sign up for uh, for emails that I'm not really sending out right now. Uh, <laughs> I've been I'm working on so many other things that Podcast Launchpad is kind of taking a little bit of a backseat, but that information is still out there. So oh, it is, um, which is really great. So. Um, if you are, if you want to get into podcasting or even if you want to take a look at this as a way to maybe think about streaming, I think it's helpful for that too, as someone who does the streaming thingy, any, any of this curated, uh, type of entertainment 
stuff. I think it's just kind of interesting to to kind of look at um, and get a feel for, you know, what kind of equipment you need and um, and uh, like all kind of like the technical side of things, um, how it all works together. And, you know, it's it, it is more of a look at the technical side of things, but it really does go into a lot of different details. What kind of, you know, what kind of headphones you need? Yeah. You know, some people are like, oh, I have these really awesome headphones that make me like the music is just sound so pure. And I'm like, nope, those are garbage for podcasting because they're open back, you know, headphones and all the sound will go right back into the microphone and you'll get tremendous amounts of feedback and you'll basically ruin your ears. Um, <laughs> so, you know, little things like that. Um, but uh, but that information is, is still out there, podcastlaunchpad.com. Um, I, I really do, you know, if anybody has any questions after reading that stuff, I'm always around to, uh, to be contacted. And, and if you have more questions, just let me know because yeah, it's there. It's there. I was actually supposed to be down in Florida in a couple of weeks, uh, cuddles. <gasps> I end? was, and I had to cancel. Oh, I had to cancel. Other stuff is coming up. That's good. crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy life stuff. It's good. Yeah. Oh, good things. That's that's, oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Hopefully, it's good things. Good things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. It's all it's all good stuff. So, uh, it's just it's it's kind of one of those things where I had to like look at it real hard and go, uh, go to Florida for two days or concentrate on real life stuff. I think I have to concentrate on real life stuff right now. So, Ooh. unfortunate. Unfortunate, but uh, that but that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, if anybody is down in the Florida area, PodFest uh, 2018 is going to be happening February 10th. And really, it's really it's really great, especially if you live in the Florida area, because um, there's a huge podcast community down there, huge. And this will get you in with like everybody in that area. So it's pretty great. Right on. Uh, Cuddles, do you have anything else, or Pat, do you have anything else you want to share about Pat Crane? <laughs> <laughs> I could share whatever. Well, <laughs> not whatever, not whatever, not, not, not like everything, but um, like all the clean stuff. All the clean stuff. <laughs> no dirty laundry here. Uh, no. No, oh, I've, got, I've got plenty of that after <laughs> being around the earth for this long so <laughs> so i i do want to jeez i want to uh i'm i'm not the one that's saying these things this week folks write that down <laughs> um that's that one not- took us 107 to get there um that's, that's right yeah no but i want to i want to say in in the uh in the sense of of reaching out to pat and asking for help Um, I actually reached out to him like some months ago. He helped me pick this microphone that I now love. And now somebody's going to write me a letter telling me all the things that are wrong with it now. Wait, which one is that? Is it the, uh, MXL? Um, this is the, uh, the PR 40. Oh, PR 40. Yeah. PR 40 is great. Yes. Uh, it's, it's an amazing mic. And I think that for most, most guys, especially, I think that you'll find that it's pretty good. I learned that um because i'm researching mics yeah it, there are certain ones that they're like if you're a girl don't get this and i'm just right. like oh i, th- I okay. think that uh, so it, like let's let's take a look at the at kind of a couple of mics at the top end of the money that anybody should ever spend on a microphone for <laughs> podcasting ever um which is you know because the the pr40 is about what three yeah, it's right there in like the It's somewhere around 3 3 350 which, something three, like there. It's yeah, right. 300 350. Yeah. Uh and then the other one that is is right around there is the SM7B by Sure. Um and that's one that like if you know uh Jewel Scott from Torrent yeah. Thinker. She uses the SM7B. Uh and the reason that she uses that one and I don't, I have one. Uh but I don't use it a lot is that um it's under it's under my desk somewhere. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, is that uh, for guys, it may dull your voice a little bit because it's a little bit more bass heavy. And for but for but for women, 
it's actually pretty good because it kind of takes some of the upper register edges off. You know what I mean? So it, it kind of rounds it a little bit more for women, which is always kind of one of the things that you're looking for. You're looking for whatever works for your voice. So I'm bookmarking this one. Okay. Yeah. And make sure wherever you, wherever you get it from, just make sure that it has a good return policy so that, you know, if you don't like it for whatever reason, you can always just kind of return it, especially like after 30 days, use it for 30 days, see if you like it. And if you don't send it back. So that's the big advice. Nice. Well, I think, I think that's all I had. Cuddles, right. do you have anything else? That's all I got. Um, I think we have had the master in the studio for just long enough. Um, Pat was here too, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Just, just one. Just right at the end. Do you have any shout outs, Pat? Uh, you know, I, I don't have anything uh, planned or anything like that, but uh, l uh, let's see. I, I just actually want to give a big shout out to the guild. To the CTR Guild, um, it's been a hell of a five years. Really has. Uh, it's been uh, pretty amazing from the from the very start. And now that we're kind of in a place where we have lots of cool officers and and uh, people are about, and and we have kind of everybody in their place and and all the systems in place as we were talking about before. It's just, it's made it so much, uh, it's kind of like living the dream at this point. So where we get to go, we get to hang out with all of our, all of our friends. It's pretty easy for the most part and everybody gets it. Yeah, That's what's really cool is that everybody, like I haven't had to deal with a problem, like a problem person in a while. And that is always awesome. Like every once, like every once in a while you get a guy that just doesn't get it. He just, for whatever reason, either he doesn't want to get it or he's fighting you about one little thing or he or she, or like there's a, there's an incident somewhere. I haven't had to deal with that in a long time. Uh, and that's because everybody in the guild, as far as I know, gets it. We understand we're here to have fun with our friends. We're here to hang out, socialize, be a part of the community and uh, yeah, have a good time. And and it's been amazing. So thank you to everybody who's uh, participated in the, in the guild over the last five years, for that matter. So everybody. Oh. Yeah. Hey, what about you? And then and you, you, have have follow, tear. you have to follow <laughs> that. <laughs> I know. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to piggyback on that and say you know, yes to the guild because um, having – dibble-dabble in a couple of online communities. There is just something unique about CTR um, where, yeah, you like you said, it, it feels like home. Even if you aren't necessarily playing WoW, you're playing other games or whatever, it's still something where you're always welcome and there's always something going on. Um, mm -hmm. And a huge shout-out to my event staff because year five, we've done it. Um, you guys did a lot of amazing things this week. Um, and it's come a long way from the first anniversary. I can tell you that. Um, very and you've long and way. you've done an amazing job, T. I just want to say that over the years, you you've definitely stepped it up, and and with the whole team now, it's been uh, again, it's just kind of living the dream. It's yeah. just kind of it's it's been really smooth and really awesome, and and thanks to to you and your team for organizing everything and and getting people together and doing doing these fun events, whether it's during the anniversary time or just any time during the year. So it's been it's been great. It has. I said the first first anniversary we were in a a switch of who was in charge and stuff. So I didn't I think I right. had like one or two on staff. So a lot of the events I I did myself and that was a week of me going, Oh my God, what am I doing? Like this is awful. <laughs> right. So much. Um uh, but no, yeah, it's like you said, it's evolved and we have a solid event staff and all of our staff, our greeters are really like it's pretty solid. So like you said, we're about to blow everything up, but that's okay. Yeah, let's just <laughs> let's just blow it all up like tomorrow. Let's just take it and just destroy everything. Just, just start over. Just, just start yeah, over. Just clean like slate. You get uh, you get the Lego pack and you build it all because that's what the that's what the five year old wanted. And then he's like, Okay, I'm right. gonna demolish it and then you have to redo it. And I'm like, the pieces and are you in don't, order. You don't just <laughs> you don't just demolish it. No. You you take like a baseball bat and you just 
you do. And then you an add week. different pieces and you take some away and you're like, but just no, it's right. done. It's done. <laughs> All right. Cuddles, what about you, sweetheart? What shout outs do you have for us today? Um, I, I will I will follow suit and although I was not around for the entirety of the of the five years of the of the CTR guild. I've been around for I don't, I don't know, two years now, three years? Three. Three. three years. Yeah, wow. three. Wow. Actually It's over three. Over don't three, make yeah. Make me feel old. <laughs> oh. Just stand next to me, you'll be fine. <laughs> That's what yeah. I do at events. You stand next to me, you won't feel old at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Getting getting involved in in WoW was one of the, one of the things that opened up the gateway of of PC gaming for me. And getting involved in CTR is what kept me around in it. Um, the 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 community and the and the folks that that are involved. Um. And and have been throughout the time that I've been around, um, have all been amazing and incredible. Um, it, it, everybody along, like from the, I think it was Nate that originally invited me, um, or maybe it was Midnight, but I ended up playing with Nate and and Midnight that night, and then a week later I was in a I was in a pet battle thing, and then all of a sudden I'm in this guild and I'm sitting in front of a webcam in Anaheim talking to people that intimidated the hell out of me. Right. Um, and then I'm streaming and now I work in the video game industry and all of that is because of Pat's podcast and, and weird, the kind right? Heart of people like Turarts. So um, weird. Damn it. I'm where I am because of CTR. Um, it's, it's a thing. Um, so there you go, guys. No, uh, no funny like iTunes thing right now because getting emotional. I'm gonna <laughs> cry, but leave some leave some reviews, five stars for the Game Case Show. We do. If you didn't like it, I don't, I don't know. Don't leave any reviews, please. <laughs> <laughs> we only like the good ones. <laughs> um, Pat, where can people find you on the internet? On the internet, you can find me at Pat Crane on Twitter and uh, around the places. And also, uh, we just re we just updated uh, the convert to raid dot com yes. site as well. So make sure to check that out. Uh, all the stuff is there now, so you can check out uh, the videos and the audios and all the things. Uh, convert to raid is all over at convert to raid dot com. It's so fancy. I love it. It's very fancy. And and, and the- a big shout out to Macus for for put, putting that together. The forums Sorry. are no more to the end of an yes, era. Yes, the forums. The forums are no more. It was about time. Oh no! That's another fun memory. Oh, right. forums. Forums. <sighs> we haven't really used them in a couple of years. No, at least. no, thank but goodness. But now they're done. They're done. Can we still so. go back and and review our old forum posts? Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know if they're totally offline. I don't they're know if you totally. want to. I don't know if I want to either. I have- I had to look at I had to look at some of them before we uh, before we uh, shut it down, and I was like, "Oh yeah, now I remember why I hated the forums. Now <laughs> I remember why they were so awful." <laughs> oh, now I kind of want to go back. But what about Podcast Launchpad? I know you mentioned it. Before. Oh yeah, where can uh, PodcastLaunchpad dot com? Uh, you can go and and there's a uh, there's a free booklet uh, PDF all about podcasting, especially the technical side. Uh, taking you from uh, equipment selection all the way to final produced piece uh, and kind of goes through the entire gambit of stuff that you need to you need to think about as you uh, prepare a podcast. So there. Right on. And guys, if you're if you're if you're thinking about starting a podcast, make sure like go 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 check that out. This is a resource that I wish that I had when I was starting out. It's a resource that obviously you can tell in our live stream could probably still use. <laughs> like, Pat can't see me. You well, can, I'm thinking about doing a streaming one, but uh, we're not there yet. So. Don't ask this guy. Um, <laughs> no, but there's and, and really and truly you are um, like you never stop learning. If you stop learning something like this, that's the no. day you should probably hang your hat up and quit. Right. Um, exactly. It, there's always going to be something else to get slightly better at, whether it's podcasting, streaming, leading a guild, 
whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. be, be a learner. So go mm-hmm. be a learner with Pat Crane's podcast Launchpad. Sure. Yeah. There you go. TM. <laughs> is there like a TM? I was going to do the hashtag thing, but then there's, there's, a, uh, there's no TM. TM. <laughs> Copyright. No, you have one of the little means, circles. That means, that means lawyers and money and stuff. It doesn't matter. I feel like it's the internet. Can't you just put it there? You could. I feel like I, like not recently, not. but I'm pretty sure I've done that with content that I put on the internet. Oh, like, sure. I'll just throw like a, I'll just throw like a. Well, you could put it. You could do there. copyright. Copyright is easy enough, but uh, I think trademark is a, is a separate thing. So right. there, there you go, guys. Um, your your <laughs> departing legal advice from Papa this Crane. From from not a lawyer. <laughs> not a lawyer. Barrister Crane from has not a spoken. lawyer. Pat Crane. Yes. yes. Um, full disclaimer, Pat Crane is not a lawyer. The show does not claim that he is a lawyer nor suggest that you treat him as a lawyer. Right. Thank you. Don't go do stupid things. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's play it. Let's, let's... Everybody say bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Game Case Show. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. You can find Cuddles at The Game Case, Tour Arts at Tour Arts, and you can find the show at The Game Case Show. Join us live Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash The Game Case. Archived episodes are available at youtube.com slash The Game Case. The theme music for the show is Celtic Impulse by Kevin McLeod of Incomputech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.